If I had a dime for every single time someone said, The end is upon us. Jesus will return in two months. Three months. The 5th of November. Or some specific time. Well, if I did have a dime for each time I'd heard that, I'd be a rich man. Mm. Well, hello. Welcome to the Simple Not Shallow podcast. My name is Charles, and this here is the Coffee Side Chat series. So named because of, well, this beautiful cup of coffee sitting on the counter right beside me. Pardon me for just a second. Hmm. I hope you have a beautiful cup of coffee sitting on the counter right beside you as well. And we are coming to you from the very hallowed halls of my kitchen university. My kitchen. Wow, there's no better place in the world than the kitchen counter to stand around, talk, laugh, and learn together while kicking around an idea or two and sipping on that beautiful cup of coffee. So, let me ask you a question. Have you been hearing all the recent talk about the end of times being upon us? You know, Jesus' second coming? I have. It's, it's on YouTube everywhere. And I must admit to you that my first reaction to seeing all of that again was to say, what? Again? I mean, if I had a dime for every single time someone said, the end is upon us. Jesus will return in two months. Three months. The 5th of November or some specific time. Well, if I did have a dime for each time I'd heard that, I'd be a rich man. Mm. But that did get me thinking. And I began to wonder, you know, if before getting too wound up over all of this, if there was a reason that we had been told about the second coming, you know, one that wasn't filled with so much hype. And the second question was, is there any way to legitimately know exactly when this is going to happen? Now, as always, we will be looking at this through the lens of what it means to be a Christian, you know, which is a following of Christ that involves a relationship first and foremost, that then immediately leads to studentship, that then leads to living a life based on everything learned. There are three very different things, but they all work together in harmony. It's always a three in unison, never one or the other. Or it's not Christian faith. Now, please remember, we only have one cup of coffee here to chat over, so just realize there is so much about this topic that could be said we're only going to glance the surface in the limited amount of time we have. But you know, maybe, just maybe, in our chat we'll find a starting point, a, a basis from which we can explore things further a little later on. And yes, I will list all the scripture I reference in the description area just for you to check out. I care about you that much. Now, here's the first question. Why are we told about the end times at all? Why not just let them happen? Well, I found some passages that I think shed light upon this. And uh, two of those are, are, are in Matthew and in Luke. It's Matthew chapter 24 and Luke 21. Here, Jesus tells us about the end as an expression of his love for us. Of his love, you ask? Yes. Yes, indeed. And let me explain for you. See, in Matthew, Jesus says he is telling us all these things because he doesn't want us to be deceived by anybody. He wants us to know that there will be folks coming down the pike who try to trick us, 
who try to deceive us and to lead us away from him. And he wants us to know that there's going to be all kinds of nastiness going on. He doesn't want it to take us off guard. He wants us to know ahead of time so that when we see these things happening, we can avoid being led away, we can uh, avoid being caught unaware, and we can avoid dropping down into despair as everything falls apart. We know what's going to happen. We know how it's going to end. And in Luke, he even adds that he doesn't want this to spring upon us suddenly, like a trap would. He wants us to be careful, alert, and expecting it to happen. See, he tells the people he loves what is coming down the pike so that they're not shocked by it or, or have their faith rocked by it, right? Isn't that a loving thing to do? I think so. Now, now, granted, these same passages are also dealing with the destruct destruction of the temple, which did, in did indeed happen in about uh, 70 AD, right? The Romans took it apart. But if you look at verse 3 of this Matthew, of, of Matthew 24, Jesus was not only asked about the, the destruction of the temple, he was also asked about his second coming and the end of the age. All three topics were in one question. So he addresses all the topics in his answer. One answer, all topics addressed. Fascinating. Now, I also found an additional reason that we are told, and it was Peter who tells us this and, uh, in Second Peter, and he says that he is writing these things down to stir up in us a very sincere mind. Well, he says, in effect, because you know these things, you know, the second coming and the end of times, you know that they're happening, you know that they're real, be the sort of people you ought to be. Well, in terms of holy conduct and godliness. And Paul then also says in, in, in 1 Thessalonians, uh, this is how he says it. He says that since we know the day of the Lord is coming, we need to be awake and sober-minded, not like those who don't believe, who he compares to ones being asleep. And he says being sober-minded involves putting on faith, and love as a breastplate, and salvation, the hope of salvation, as a helmet. He's saying, be prepared. And I also found this echoed in the book of Revelation itself, you know, the book about the end of times, the whole book. I found this in the third and sixteenth chapters of Revelation. And here, Jesus says that he is indeed coming quickly, and so, Stay awake. Hold on to what you know. And then, in the last chapter of the book, chapter 22, he says, I am coming soon, and I am bringing with me a reward for each person according to what they have done. So, the blessed, excuse me, so blessed, so blessed, Blessed, yeah. So blessed are the ones who have washed their robes white, those who've taken it seriously, those who've been sober-minded. And not so blessed will be everybody else. So, to sum up all this for this one answer to this one question, we know, we know these things, and because we know these things, we are called to be diligent. We should take our relationship with Jesus seriously and not allow ourselves to be lulled into thinking that things don't really matter. You know, that everything will always be as it always has been. Again, we are being told what is coming down the pike as an encouragement to stay engaged, to stay strong in our faith. How cool is that? All right. Time for the second question has arrived. 
Can we determine when this will all happen? I mean, can we know that it'll happen in a month, in six months, a year, two years, the election? Can we know any of that? Well, it might be best if I simply let Jesus tell you this himself. He says, no one knows the day or the hour that this will occur. You know, not the angels in heaven, nor Jesus himself. Only the Father knows when this will all transpire. So, no, we cannot know when this will happen. So here, nope does indeed mean nope. And, based on what we've learned so far, we don't need to know. We need to be aware. We need to be ready. And we simply need to rock on. We don't need to know the when in order to get on with things, do we? I mean, Peter, Paul, and John, all three do teach that Jesus' second coming will be at a very unexpected time. They phrase it like this. His coming will be like a thief in the night. Thieves don't show up when they're expected, right? Now, Paul even says, now this is interesting, Paul even says that it will be when folks are saying that everything is hunky-dory. Okay, okay, okay. He doesn't exactly use such highly technical terminology as hunky-dory. But, he does say that it will be when folks are saying that everything is well, that there is peace and safety. See, we won't be able to predict it at all, ever. Jesus will show up when he shows up, period. However, when he does come, he will show up with more than just bells and whistles. It's going to be unmistakable so we don't need to worry about it. Well, we are getting a little bit long in this episode, and my coffee is starting to run very short. So, to sum this all up about the end times, we need to expect them. We should use this knowledge to stay fully engaged with our faith at all times, and to not despair or allow ourselves to be deceived by those teaching us things other than what Jesus himself taught, other than what God teaches us in the Bible. Now, because of this, the timing of all this simply doesn't matter. I mean, we need to be aware when things start to go sideways and all, but to be caught up focusing on the win of it all and that's simply to lose focus on Jesus, right? The Him of it all. Well, it is a fascinating topic. And please remember that this has merely been a starting point, not an end all discussion of the matter. Use your studentship to explore it further, learn all you can. And please, in the comment section, let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts. And please, do not just say, you're wrong, young man. You definitely have a screw or two that are very, very loose. Well, first, thank you for calling me a young man. Highly appreciated it. And yeah, I, I, I know I got a screw or two loose. And, you know, if you're being completely honest about it, you probably do as well. But without letting me know the reason why you think I'm wrong, well, you're never going to help those screws that I have loose get any tighter, are you? And when you do give a reason, a conversation can begin. And who knows, perhaps we will both grow in our relationship with God as the conversation develops. And we might even become friends ourselves. And that would be a very cool thing. So thank you for doing so. 
Well, until next time then, may you live fully engaged in your Christian faith. May you keep a balanced perspective. And may you take it easy and take it slow and make coffee into your cup always flow. Still the poet. Mm-hmm.